Today we're speaking with Dr. Carlos Artiaga. He is director of the breast cancer program at the Vanderbilt Ingram Cancer Center, and he is professor of medicine and cancer biology at Vanderbilt University. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Artiaga. You're welcome. Your work helped uh, in the development of targeted drugs like Herceptin, Aritux, and Tarceva. Would you describe your current work with endocrine resistance? Current, sure, uh, Michelle. Thanks for the invitation. <clears throat> we are trying to understand what are the mechanisms that hormone-dependent estrogen receptor positive breast cancer cells use when they escape, when they adapt to hormone deprivation, mm -hmm. to, which is the same to say as the current anti-estrogen, anti-hormone therapies. And again, uh, using a combination of uh, cell lines as also tumors from patients that have progressed on hormonal therapy, we're using uh, what we think are state-of-the-art molecular methods to discover, again, oncogenes, uh, pathways, alterations that are targetable that would allow us to then, uh, once we inhibit those targets, prolong the response to hormonal, to anti-hormonal agents. Um, there's a large amount of information in that particular space that is going to be presented at this meeting, not only from my laboratory, but from many laboratories in the world. This is an area of high interest to the breast cancer community. When we last spoke, you discussed the need for new targeted clinical trials with enrollment based on biomarkers. Would you discuss your work in this area? Well, um, sure. Uh, I would like to talk to you about the work we've done in the context of the Standard to Cancer Grant, for example, That'd be great. where we are uh, trying to develop uh, PI3 kinase, inhibitors of PI3 kinase for the treatment of patients with cancer, particularly patients with uh, women's cancers, ovarian, endometrial, and breast. And uh, I think what has happened more recently is that uh, pharmaceutical companies and investigators have come to the realization that we have to do a better job at selecting our patients before we enroll them into clinical trials by detecting those alterations, in this case in PI3 kinase, that predict that those patients will be likely the ones that will benefit from these drugs. So this is new. If you go back 10 years, we didn't, we were not doing these kinds of things. We were just treating all comers. Now we, with the power of molecular biology and molecular assays, we can, I think we can do a little bit, a good job in identifying those patients up front. So we select the patients that are likely going to benefit from these new drugs while we spare those patients that may not derive benefit from these drugs. So this is new. Again, this is when I meant new clinical trials designs is, again, uh, is that um, put a little more homework on the selection of patients upfront by identifying the targets of those drugs we're using in those patients' tumors. From your perspective, what are some of the most important SABCS presentations this year? That's a very difficult question, Michelle. There are many great presentations. You know, you have to realize we received 1,400 abstracts, and I think about 50 make it to the podium. So that is a, a very low percentage. Uh, there are many posters that are just outstanding that just don't make it for the sake of time. They don't make it to, 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 you know, to a slide talk. But one session I'm particularly excited is a session tomorrow morning on neoadjuvant therapy of breast cancer, which shows how we are now using that pre-surgery space to investigate new combinations. Okay, uh, so the patients, some of these novel therapies are now being tested before the patient has an operation. So we can score the effect of these combinations on the patient's tumor without really compromising whatsoever the long-term outcome of that patient. So I think uh, that like three or four presentations that will be followed by a discussion uh, uh, that, that will speak to the use, the value of this, of this approach, again, for the improvement of the clinical development of some of the many combinations we have now at our disposal uh, in, in patients with breast cancer. And this is your third year, this is the third year, rather, with the AACR being partnered with Baylor and CT, CTRC. Can you discuss how this partnership has flourished and some of the goals for the coming years? I think that the, uh, the, the, I think the partnership between the CTRC, Baylor, and the AACR has worked in the sense that now we have uh, uh, an increasing number of 
basic scientists coming to this meeting. It was the, uh, the, the, the wish of the previous leadership uh, that the AACR will add to the translational strengths of this meeting. That will add a basic science flavor to the meeting. Uh, and I think that is working well. We have added two very distinguished awards to the meeting. Uh, we have added uh, press coverage. Now the abstracts are reported in cancer research. Uh, we have expanded the basic science sessions. And uh, the attendance is staying at a high level or going up despite bad economic times. So I think that um, the partnership is, is going well. That's what I hear from my colleagues. I think that the challenge is gonna be how to improve what is already an outstanding meeting, but um, I am committed to working with the AACR to doing that. Thank you. And what is your sense of the progress that has been made overall in the field? I think Dr. Osborne said it this morning, mortality in breast cancer continues to go down. I would uh, be, uh, I think it would be unfair to say it's all basic research which has led to new therapies. No, I think uh, there are a number of things. I mean, uh, women, uh, the, uh, we're detecting cancers early. Uh, there's uh, mammography is helping us. Now we, uh, in the underdeveloped world, you know, cancer, breast cancer still detected in an advanced stage. In our country, is detected, uh, again, at a, at a minimal stage increasingly, which increases the likelihood of a cure. That on the early side. On the late side, for patients that, that are unfortunate to present with advanced disease or to recur, we have an increasing number of new therapies which are the product of molecular biology, molecular research at the bench by many of the AACR members. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I think that uh, it's hard for me to say uh, what is working. I think it's a combination of things. Patient awareness, uh, the involvement of patients and advocates is a big thing, a big reason for the progress. I would, I would, I would surmise, um, but the mortality is going down. So that tells me that, 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 again, we're making progress. Dr. Arteaga, thank you so much. Thanks to you.